Good day, and welcome to another A Week at the Plot. I've been getting on with the garlic and the onion bed, so I harvested the last of the onions, the only full-sized onions that we've got. I went in and removed all of the poppies. Quite heartbreaking, but they had gone over and there's going to be plenty of seed with those poppies. So, in fact, when I took the poppies out, I've put them all into a big black bucket, not with water, but a big bucket to hold them up and they'll dry out over the next week or so. And then I can put them into a big paper band bag, maybe a, like a potato sack, tip them upside down and get all of those poppy seeds out so yeah i got those out and then i got the brambles out too so i went as deep as i i felt i could go and pull those brambles up as much as i can i'm sure they'll come back i'm sure they'll come back but you know what going in deeper is a job for the winter it's not a job for the summer and in fact after i had done that i decided i wasn't going to tickle over the two beds with a fork today it's just too hot. It's just too hot. It's more cloudy than it was yesterday. So there's more shade. I mean, as you can most probably see, I'm going in and out of a dappled look under this apple tree. So there's more cloud, there's more um, of an overcast sky. But once that sun is full on, it really is full on like it was yesterday. And after what was effectively a 12 hour stay at the plot yesterday because of the photo shoot i just don't have the energy or the drive today to oh, sort out that that bed fully so i've done what i've done and i'm happy with that and i'll get on and do the rest another day i want to crack on a bit later with the brassicas and putting the brassicas into the big tomato bed i'm still calling it the big tomato bed and there i think later this week i might have a look at sowing some carrots in this bed by the poly tunnel where we've got our cucumbers the soil is really good in there and it looks as though we're going to have some rain later this week so i think if i sow maybe midweek and get on top of the watering then hopefully we'll have some water natural water as rain on uh, Saturday or Sunday and that will help that um, everything sort of just get going because watering is uh, oh I just kicked the camera completely um, watering is something else that I need to get on with today and I have done some but I need to do more not as much as if I had those tomatoes outside but hey ho I don't Anyway, I showed you what I was doing. Let me just show you the bed now, the garlic and the onions bed, or what was the garlic and the onions bed. And I think it's going to be beetroot and turnips and fennel and maybe some salads. Let's just have a quick look and then I'll say goodbye. So these are the two beds I've been working on today. The bed at the front is where we had our garlic. The bed at the back had our onions, which really didn't do at all well. You can see some full-size onions just lying on the ground there. They've just been drying a bit in the sun, and I'm going to move them onto a bench in a moment. But once I'd taken the poppies out, harvested those onions, and also taken out the bramble that was in there, I really don't have the energy to continue and you know what that is to say that's fine I don't need this bed straight away or these two beds straight away as I think I'll be planting into them next week or sowing into them next week anyway I've got another job that I want to do which is brassicas and getting our brassicas in to the big tomato bed so I'm just going to carry on with that and I'll see you soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot. Bye. Good day. And the afternoon 
is really quite hot. However, I do want to get these brassicas in. As you can see, I haven't taken up the green rope yet, but um, I'll get onto that. But I'm not sure if you can see the twine on the left hand side, the, the two rows on the left hand side. There's twine going down, which was actually on these closer two rows a short while ago. On this side, we have Nero di Toscana. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fourteen Nero di Toscana. Then at the top, there are six dazzling blue kale. And then on the left hand side, we have our Portuguese cabbage. On the right hand side, I'm actually planting them about 18 inches between the row and about 15 inches between the plants. And as you can see, they're not staggered, where hopefully you can see on the left side, they are actually staggered. So that is to give more room between the Portuguese cabbage plants because they are bigger plants overall. So what am I going to do? As you can see, I've spaced them all out and now I'm going to get on my hands and knees with a trowel, dig a hole where these are all positioned and plant them about six inches deep. So the actual plugs are about three inches deep. So they're going to be just about double the depth that they are or have been in the modular cells. So I'm just going to get on and do that. These brassicas are all now in. The ones really close to us are the dazzling blue kale. Then on the left we've got Cavolo Nero, in fact Nero di Toscana. And then on the other side is our Portuguese cabbage. What I do want to do is just move that comfrey that's at the top of the screen. I want to lift that up so that it's not a hiding place for snails. But yes, all of these have been planted about six inches deep. They've had two really good waterings. I did spray them yesterday with some of that grazers deterrent for cabbage white butterflies and I have to say I've been standing here for a while and I haven't seen any cabbage whites that have come along landing but what I am going to do because it's so hot is I'm going to just loosely cover these over with netting to just give them a little bit of shade so I'm going to get on and do that and what I am going to do is I'm going to link to Vivi's Brassica video here and she gives step-by-step -step instructions of how to plant your brassicas. So I'm doing what she's doing. She's doing what we do. It's all pretty standard, but she explains it really well. Right, I'm going to get the netting on here. And I'll see you soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot. Bye!
Good day. And yes, watering. A really important job to get done. It's better to drench your plants on a regular basis every couple of days than give them a little dribble of water every day. So when you are looking at your plants and watering your plants, what I suggest you do, which is what I do, is I give them a water first and then I go back about 20 minutes, 30 minutes later and I give them another water. In my mind, that means that the water you put down first gets a chance to sink into the soil a bit and the water that then you then put on top as a second watering gets down into the roots of the plant. But yes, better to give a really good water every other day or, or even every three days than to give a little every single day. But of course, what happens when you do the watering and, and you have heat like we have in the UK at the moment, which for us is hot. I know for other places in the world, 30 degrees is not hot. But in the UK, 30 degrees is hot. In fact, the Met Office yesterday, so this is Tuesday morning now, gave the first ever UK um, severe weather warning for heat. They only started it, I think, last month, but um, they now see a, a need to actually do that, which, of course, is a concern for all of us, um, humans, nature, the planet, the ecosystem, everything going forward because we are hotting up. There is a climate crisis. There is climate change. And we are seeing the effects of that on a daily basis. Anyway, yes, it's just gone half past nine. I've done my first watering. So I have watered everything that I want to water first time round. And in about, as I say, 20 minutes, half an hour, I will do the same again. I've been watering with the watering can this morning every now and again. I mean, getting the hose out is a bit of a faff, but it's really, really fantastic to get the hose out. I think once a week if you are allowed to use a hose. But in between giving everything a really good drenching with the hose, I use my two watering cans. So, yeah, I will be going around in about 20 or 30 minutes, giving everything another really good soaking. The netting that the brassicas that I planted yesterday are under, um, there was a huge slug underneath it, right in the middle of the netting. The slug must have been about four or five inches long. So I know that the netting is not there to keep slugs at bay. It's there for other insects and, and also the, the cabbage white butterflies and things like that. But it did sort of amuse me to see such a huge slug under there. It sort of was saying, oh, netting. Yes, that's giving me a bit of shade I can get under there and that will be lovely. Obviously, I didn't leave it there. I put it onto our compost heap um, so it can live its life out over there. I've told it not to come back, so I hope it listens to me. So, yes, watering, you know, do keep on top of your watering especially when you're sowing seeds, which we're going to be doing later on today, because at that very early stage of sowing, you need to make sure that that ground on top really does stay moist, because obviously most seedlings are going to be germinating, like carrots and parsnips, things like that, are going to be germinating in the top inch of soil, and that can dry out really, really quickly. But anyway, more of that later. Right, I'm going to just check something that I'd forgotten about yesterday and then I'll do another round of watering and I'll see you again very soon. Bye. Good day. I've decided I am going to be sowing carrots into this bed that was previously our tomato bed by the polytunnel. I'm going to be sowing two types of carrots, Nantes and Autumn King. Autumn King is a favourite for ours for overwintering and Nantes hopefully will grow quite quickly to give us a harvest or harvests this year. What I'm going to do is I'm going to 
put Autumn King into the inside drills that I've made here which I haven't told you about. So there are four drills, as you can most probably see, two on either side of the central line of cucumbers. And I'm going to be growing the Autumn King, or sowing rather, the Autumn King to grow on the two inner drills. And on the two outer drills, I'm going to put the nonce, simply because I think the ground in the middle here is better deeper down or it's at the edge it can be quite tight about six eight inches down where in the middle it goes down a good foot this bed is in its fifth growing season now so it was just started on very very hard ground and actually over the years the the depth of good soil has really improved in this bed significantly as it has in all of our beds really so yes, that's what I'm going to be doing. A row of nonce on the outside and a row of autumn king on the inside of each side of this bed. So that is our two types of carrots, Nantes and Autumn King, sown in this bed, making use of the bed now that the tomatoes have had to come out. And it won't be our only sowing of Autumn King because once those potatoes are out there, I will be doing another sowing in there. That will most probably be in a, a week's time, a week or so's time. But that's it for today. Well, that's it for this segment of A Week at the Plot for today. I'm going to do another watering of this bed before I leave. And what I did decide to do, which I don't normally do, but because it is so warm here, I decided that once I'd sowed the seeds into the drills, I watered the drills before I then covered up the drills and then I watered the sown seed again. So yeah, I don't normally do that, but with it being so warm and at the moment relatively dry, I thought that was the sensible thing to do. Fingers crossed for the germination of these because I know many people are having challenges with carrots germinating this year. See you soon. Bye. Good day. It is Wednesday morning, just coming up to half nine, and it's already a belter of a day. Saying it's 34.3 degrees in the shed, I'm certainly quite sweaty. I am doing what I have been doing. I'm doing a bit more watering. I remember there's a few beans that I didn't water yesterday, so I've come to give them an absolute drenching today. And um, 
yeah it's just going to be a pottering watering and and checking on things day actually even though it's wednesday morning you won't be seeing this till later in the week um rich and i are just hanging a couple of days out which um which I'm looking forward to, but this is actually going to be the end of a week at the plot for, for this week. So yeah, I'm, I'm just checking things and it's interesting. I was on the, um, the brassicas bed. That's the first time I've called it the brassicas bed rather than the, the large tomato bed. So I was on the brassicas bed, which is the large tomato bed and was, was, looking at the brassicas under the netting, making sure that the netting was loose on top. So even though it's staked, not staked, um, held down at the side with bricks and other things, it's there's still plenty of room for the brassicas to grow. And of course, it's really warm and I put them in a couple of days ago, so they're still getting used to that ground in there. Um, it's better that they were in the ground than continuing being in modules. But as I was doing this, um, I was thinking, oh, some of them are, are looking a bit wilted. But of course, it's so warm. You know, brassicas do not like a lot of heat or particularly the brassicas that we grow mainly in this country are not acclimatized to 30 degree heat. So they do tend to wilt, as do many plants. It's their, it's their sort of safety mechanism, if you like, a bit like us sweating. <laughs> Um, but I was looking and thinking that they were looking a bit wilted, but understood why. And then, bang, I was taken back to a moment when I think I was eight in our back garden, in our vegetable patch of our back garden with my dad. And my dad was explaining to me about the shock of plants being transplanted. And when you take a plant from its module and you put it out into the ground, it's a bit like us having to acclimatise when we move house, which we had done maybe two years before this, this moment that I was remembering. And Dad was saying, you know, that's the shock and the plant has to get used to it, which is why you need to make sure that you're giving it plenty of water um, and, um, and if you can, giving it some shelter. So the netting here is giving it a little bit of shade from the... Um, pretty unbearable beating sun that we've got today so yeah isn't it funny how those moments really transport you back in time and it's really quite poignant today because my dad died five years ago on the 22nd of July which was two days before my 50th birthday so there's a lot of emotion obviously around um my birthday you know when when you have big life events like that around birthdays or christmas or new year you know they do become quite poignant and of course they're always uh, a memory stop aren't they um because i know that every time i come up to my birthday two days before my birthday x amount of years ago that was the last time I saw dad, you know, so yeah, yeah. And that's a, I, I actually think that's a good thing, you know, to hold, to hold those memories in one and to, to understand where they're coming from. And those moments of, of being there when I was eight with the, the chickens at the bottom of the garden with the big bamboo um, hedge line that we had, huge laburnum tree that, that wasn't out at that point. Um, seeing the um, seeing the carrots out in the bed and seeing the beetroot gosh the beetroot that year when I was eight was so fantastic and then putting these these brassicas in and learning about plant shock or transplant shock so yeah happy 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 memories happy memories they obviously get one emotionally but they are happy memories so yeah when I was looking at the brassicas here under the netting thinking oh they look a bit i was thinking yeah okay there give them some water make sure that they're they're going to be fed at some point in the future though they have had chicken manure pellets but the other thing you don't want to do is when you've transplanted something you don't want to give it a lot of feed you need to to make sure that that plant finds its its way if you like 
those roots find their way into the soil because once they found their way outside of their their module or outside of the the ground that was around the when you transplant them and bed themselves in it's at that point that you want to feed because that's when the roots are going to take up the nutrients which will benefit the overall growth of the plant rather than benefit um, erratic and fast root growth so um, even though I put chicken manure pellets on that bed the other day I'm I'm not going to um, I'm not going to give them any seaweed feed or anything like that for a good few weeks to come so yeah there we are I'm going to leave it there for today and uh, get on with doing some more watering it is one of those weeks isn't it and I will see you again very soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll see you again next week for another week of A Week at the Plot. See you soon. Have a good week. Bye.